Whoa, 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 welcome back, ladies and gents, and non-binary pals, of course, to another wonderful episode of Those Damn Kids. I am your game master, dungeon master, whatever the storyteller, narrator thing, uh, Tyson Fraley. And, of course, we have our intrepid cast of characters along with us. Uh, starting off the bunch, we've got the rascal who flies a giant space bird in the sky. We have Adam Honigman. Thunderbirds, let's go. I like how you decided that the hole left by Daft Punk breaking up, you decided to fill. I appreciate that. Thank you. Next up, we've got the uh, farm kid far from home who's looking to figure out what happened to his parents as well as control the ancient ways, the mystic art of the push the pull it is alexander cruz toto we're not in kansas anymore uh fun fact there is a series of Yu-Gi-Oh cards that is based on a mashup of star wars and uh the wizard of oz because they're very similar stories next up we got a princess however she's not in another castle she's in this one it just also happens to be a giant death machine however she does know how to work a machine gun it is grace and roach i do know how to work a machine gun and I am in this castle. Um, and god damn it, can't somebody come and give me a little smooch? I'm tired of this and I want to go away. And finally, we have the giant uh, anthropomorphized pig, uh, but absolutely covered in hair. You'd think it were some sort of like bear-like creature. Otherwise, it is Liz Nivine. <laughs> what is that even? I, can't, I didn't even catch the reference. So many things are covered in hair. Anyway, with uh, Tyson's wonderful, wonderfully convoluted introductions uh, once again concluded, let's jump into a very quick recap of what happened last episode. Last time on Those Damn Kids, the crew was brought back to the present after having a brief and terrifying stint in the future. Uh, upon arrival, they encountered a f former officer named Alan Rick Rickson of, for some strange reason. Uh, who was exploring the area around the loop. They were able to disarm him by crushing his sense of self and returning him to the woods uh, as seemingly a man of the land, I guess? Something like that. The party then took his moped, figuring out a plan of what to do with Jenny's injured leg. They eventually decided to travel to Kit's house, where Kit's mother uh, was able to inspect her leg uh, and deduced that the best thing to do was go to the hospital. Uh, the party that was able to convince Kit's mom to go to Jenny's house instead, uh, where they met with Jenny's dad after a brief argument between Mr. Williams and Mrs. Carrington. Uh, the party broke off into a few different directions. Kit took uh, her mother to Mr. McPherson's scrap. Olivier and Baxter followed not too far behind, where Jenny was left alone at her house, from which she encountered a strange vision reality of Jess crying in her room. After a brief moment of trying to figure out what exactly was going on, Jess asked if she could kiss Jenny, at which point there was a, uh, a very brief, uh, I can't think of any, another word for kiss, there was a very brief kiss, and then they returned back to the present. At McPherson's scrap, Kit's mother uh, encountered Charlie, her long-lost husband, and through a very heartfelt conversation, uh, they were able to rekindle uh, their lost hopes and dreams uh, and found each other once again as the Carrington family was reunited uh, everyone arrived back, and after relaying all the information about what they knew was going on to the Carrington parents, Mrs. Carrington is heading back to the hospital, and that is where we left off. So, the four of you are still at McPherson Scrap, as, uh, as Mrs. Carrington has taken Charlie and is driving him home before driving off to work uh you guys still have the moped uh you guys still have the atv hope stands nearby uh, as well as mr mcpherson 
what would you like to do? About what time is it in the day? At this point, it's about 3, 3.30. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I, like, need a nap. Right. That makes sense. How's, how's, the, how's the bad leg thing? Still bad. So, we have to save the world now, huh? Yeah. That's kind of a thing, eh? And Riley. Riley! Right! I... I really appreciate you saying that. That means a lot that he's your he's your priority over the world. That means a lot to me. Thank well, you. Well, no, R- Riley's maybe a little more pressing, right? Like the the cuz that's like that's like going to happen. Yeah, cuz yeah, Terminator, right? Right? Right. 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 Well, Agreed. I don't know, but I don't know about that Agreed? necessarily. It just seems to me like, you know, you know when you've got a lot of, like you got like a big problem and then you got like a smaller problem that's happening like and it doesn't matter if they're related. You deal with the small problem first because the big problem's harder to tackle. Are you right? saying Riley's a small problem? Saying I'm, he's not worth I mean, it? In, 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 no, he, I just finished saying that I wanted to do that first, Pan. Well, if we save him, then the bad future won't happen. But we, 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 we were like kids in, in, in the cell. There's a there's a notes thing. There, uh, this is Alex speaking. We, we have notes about this when the loop than when the thing happened right i feel like i should yeah it's 85 right now that took place in 2021 right so there's like a 30 year gap there but i think at the halfway point of there is when things got bad the loop unleashed something oh uh, that's what mr Mc- that's what mcpherson would say he's been saying that for years oh my god we we should have listened to him never drink the water mr mcpherson yes do you know how to keep no i'm not gonna hope yes uh do you know anything about robot blood in the water of planet Earth? Robots do not require blood to operate. It's not a... Jenny, 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 Jenny. It wasn't a robot. It's the thing possesses the robots. But it was like a robot thing. I was like, no, it was it was squishy. It's squishy wall. No. Ha- so what, ho- it's an alien? Yeah, do you know about squishy wall blood? No. I do! Mr. McPherson, while I think that'd be thrilling, just a great conversation at some point later down the line. Should we, like, find Wendell? Uh, I would really like to find Wendell. Did they get him already? Is he in the cage? He could be. Like, in the loop? Right now? We do technically know how to get in. And I take out my little journal that I was drawing the map in the future. Do I still have it? You, you have do have the map to the tunnel so- system. But that was plumbing, wasn't it? Like, isn't it full of water right now? It might just be sewage. Well, our options are either it's it's poop or it's alien blood water, and neither of one is good. I'm not going in either of those. Yeah, I don't think they're going to let us in through the front door. We have access. We We are saving Riley first, but after that, we gave ourselves access. As long as we're quiet, the doors will probably just let us in. I thought we were saving Riley. Why are we saving Wendell now? Liz, I, I, I think we should save Baxter's brother. I think we should. I think we should focus on Riley. I agree with everybody, but what do we need to do to make that happen right now? Well, we know his route. We know the stores, and I pull out the folder. We know the stores he's gonna hit. So if we just start at a store, when R- Riley walks in, he'll see me, and I'll go, "Whoa, Baxter!" And then he'll become enlightened and stop crime. That's a great idea. However, I think we should come up with a plan B in case he doesn't become enlightened. Yeah, I think there are a couple steps you're skipping there, buddy. I think that'll work. I mean, Riley's not very smart, no offense. Hey! He's the smartest, coolest, best guy. He's canny like a raccoon or something. But, uh... Like a, like a possum. Yeah, like a possum. Uh, did it, did it, did it say if there was anybody else with him, if it was just him? No, he has his... He got his companions, his accomplices. And the crime spree is tomorrow? A- is it currently tomorrow now, Tyson, or is tomorrow tomorrow? Tomorrow tomorrow. Okay. Because, like, it'd be one thing to reason with your brother, but, like, what if the other guys are, like, peer pressuring him or something? Well, according to the file, and I flip through, they insert thing that they do during the crime spree here. You can't read it. Isn't it, like, half still? Well, busy? I'd I'd read it previ- I'd read it previously, so I know at least the past information. Like, are you asking the reason that 
Well, ha- no, like, like what department. is like he gets shot, right? Mm-hmm. What is like they held up department stores. Yeah, what is what is their like um place in this? Like what mention was there of them? Like do they get shot? Do they flee? Like what happens? Uh the two other accomplices uh fled. Um however, they were apprehended pretty quickly after. I was going to ask uh, how many stores they made it in. They made it into a total of 3 before the shootout began. It also seems that at the beginning, you do remember, uh, having gone a little bit more in depth into it in your initial read, that they had actually first attempted not to, like, rob the place. Uh, They attempted to break in uh, near the end of, uh, what is it, one of the shifts, trying to break in through a back wall using a large uh, puncture hammer. That was used to break through the concrete going into the safe. Mm -hmm. And then they decided that that wasn't working, so they just attached the safe to their cars and drove away with it? (laughs) Sadly not. No, the attendant discovered what they were doing in the back, and then it quickly turned into a, like, more of a robbery than anything else. Well, that that sounds like the perfect place to, like, to, to get them before anything else goes bad, right? If they're not already in deep with the guns and stuff, we'd have a better shot talking to them. And... Hey guys, this is also a Grayson thing because I'm trying to make sense of this note, but uh, are we going to try to tempt him with that skate thing? The skate jam that has prize money? That's what we're doing, right? Yes. Okay, cool. I was just making sure that my brain was there. He is a skater boy. He'll say, say you litter boy. It's a crime. It is worth noting. The skate jam is tonight. The crime takes place tomorrow afternoon. Okay, so... We need to find them tonight. What time tonight? It's happening around around 8 o'clock tonight. Unless we enter the skate thing. Get the money. And win the prize money. And, and then, then tempt, tempt them with, with it. And with the money. Can you skateboard? I can do a kick flip if you don't look. Nope. Okay. Nope. That that's not happening. All right. It was a good idea. You can but... play any role, though. Can you? You can skateboard. You could be a skateboarder. That doesn't. It doesn't make mu- muscle memory happen. It just makes my voice good. I've skated before, but guys, obviously Jenny is our prize winner here. I have a broken leg. She's a little tapped out now. And you have ro- you have robot leg now. I need a nap and like food, and then more nap. We could we could probably we could probably lunch we could probably have have a like Mr. McPherson you want know can I, can I I just I just made myself at home I just start grabbing like peppers and mm-hmm. uh, you you tur- you turn around where you can see Mr. McPherson uh, is nearby on on a on a work table where you can hear a <laughs> sound as he's attempting to saw through a piece of wood uh, that he sees he has. Uh, a, fe- a set of four what look to be chair wheels that he seems to be trying to screw together with his hat on like a like a baseball him. cap backwards. I, Just, I, I can skate it. Mm. I'm hip with the kids. Do it. Do a trick. Do a trick. I uh, sure as he just sets it down on the ground. Hmm stands on it as he immediately starts wobbling forwards backwards see i can get with it as like to compensate for the wiggling he's like doing like some sort of like weird elvis dance with his knees before he tries to do an ollie but as it kicks down it just shoots out from under him as he and just hits the ground that was so cool i go up to i give him like a pat on the shoulder like I really, I really appreciate that, Mr. McPherson. Honestly, and I help him up. <laughs> Can my parents skate? I feel like Charlie was cool. You'd have to ask him. <coughs> oh, Rat Dad? Rat Dad can help us. I think, I think we were onto something. I'm like making, I'm like cutting up veggies, some carrots and stuff. I feel like we were onto something with, um, with maybe finding, uh, Riley before any of this goes down. To be telling him about the thing. Do we? Do you? Do you think you might know where he might be, Baxter? We can check his friends' houses. I haven't really gone there, but he's kind of like drove past them to pick things up and drop things off. And I think I can know the location of them in the town pretty well, I think. I'm very good with coordinates. 
Mr. McPherson, I'm sure you're against like government surveillance, but there's no way that you have tabs on where like people are around these parts throughout the day and stuff. Your pigeons don't check up on them? No. Ah! ah! Don't give me that. Don't give me that, man. <laughs> you already told us about the phones, so I don't I don't keep I don't keep surveillance on other people. I, but I'm trying to track the trackers. If he's my brother and I'm a small god, then he's a big god. He's like medium sized. Medium sized god. Oh god. I cannot bring down the wrath of a of a medium sized god. I do not I don't want I don't want the, 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 the anger of a tiny god either. Alright, let me see what I can dig up. <clears throat> so he heads over towards his computer. If your leg is broken, there are ways that we can uh amend that situation if if that is so uh necessary, Jenny. Yeah, okay. Uh, I was going to perhaps compose some sort of exterior exoskeleton to go around the leg to respread the redistribute the weight. That or perhaps uh, with all of the stuff here, th there is a surprising amount of good <laughs> material that Mr. McPherson has here. I might be able to develop and build some uh, form of uh, all-terrain uh, wheelchair, as it were. Uh, to be able to get you around places. We'll have a cup holder. Rocket power wheelchair. I mean, I'll I'll take whatever you got, Hope. That's very nice of you. Thank you. Well, I was I was just thinking, Mr. McPherson here has uh, a fair amount of Lieber Alta factory pieces. Uh, I might be able to construct uh, a Magnetrine wheelchair. A what? A, a hovercraft wheelchair. They use the power of magnetics to lift itself off the ground. Well, that's totally normal technology that I'm very comfortable and familiar with. Oh, well, those were more, mostly manufactured in Europe. Uh, they are sometimes shipped here, but they're mostly sent to major cities. Man, I love Europe. But uh, with that being the case, with Lieber Alta, the factory nearby, it seems that Mr. McPherson has totally, legally, uh, scrapped some of the old hardware. Totally legally! So I might have a few pieces lying around that I could construct that, or the exoskeleton. Up to you. Oh, but what about the other um, robot? I don't remember if they had a designation. Um, like, are there enough pieces for both of us? Oh, yes. Trust will be able to be looked after. That, that will not be an issue. If she's not going to take the exoskeleton, can I take the exoskeleton, but instead of making it just to make my leg better, you can make it so, like, I'm I'm all super better and have super strong, more super strong strength, and I'm ten times better, and I can live rocks and maybe shoot lasers? It would probably make you taller, too. I am at only, like, a quarter of an inch shorter than you, and I'm going to grow, because I'm big and strong. I mean, there's... A possibility. It would take me a while. Yeah, I was gonna say, how long do you think this all t would take, Hope? The l well, it it very much depends. It depends on if it's an exoskeleton. It depends on if a if it's a magnetrine vehicle. It depends on if it's an exoskeleton mixed in with lasers. I mean, lasers are cool, but we already have these guns that recharge. I think they recharge. Ah, miners with weapons. That's truly terrifying. Oh, Hope, can can you... I take my vest off and the gun. Can you put these in an exoskeleton for me? To save you some time. I mean, this sort of, I guess. Honestly, whatever is, like, easiest to put together for right now and won't hurt more? I, off I offered both because they're both going to take the same amount of time. Oh, what time is that? I could probably get it to you by tonight. If I started now? Could I, like, jump and stuff with a cyborg leg? With the exoskeleton, you should be able to, yes. Oh, wow. It, it, so she could, like, walk and stuff and, and run and jump with that? It'll redistribu redistribute the weight to other parts of her body. Uh, you'll have to go through a little bit of uh, physiotherapy up upon getting it removed. It may cause uh, some minor atrophy of muscle groups in your leg. Uh, since that they won't be getting as much uh, weight as they were before. However, uh, give it, uh, let's say, a few weeks after uh, you take it off, and you should be back to normal. 
I mean, one atrophy leg is better than two atrophy legs, so I don't really feel like walking more right now, but if it'll take the same amount of time, I guess I'll take the exoskeleton. In which case, I shall, uh, I shall get to it. Could I put pants over it? Like, would it show? Uh, as long as no one spots it, yes. Okay, great, so it's like nothing ever happened. Cool. You might have to wear baggier jeans, Jenny. Are you saying my jeans are tight? These are like totally in fashion right now. N no, I I know I I no I, I hey I'm I'm aware I'm just saying like to hide it better. Which point hope turns to trust. All right, well let's uh let's get to a trust. Alrighty. Was trust one of the ones in the future or no? No. However, I, I will say, uh, looking at trusts, like robotics, uh, you see. A lot of things like general frame, uh, some of the plastic coverings, there's a lot of parts of trust that you seem to recall made up a variety of the other vagabonds. It seems that even if a android is like taken offline permanently, uh, that their parts are still able to be used to uh, better the next generation. I found something incredible, man. It's like there's a it's like there's some kind of story going on here. Woo! Go into the computer. <laughs> Let's check this shit out. All right. So as you can see here, I've looked up your brother's name over and over again across a lot of different uh, markets across town. Specifically, credit card. He got one very recently. And he has currently made five purchases. One, at a dollar store near downtown called Nickel and Dimed. Two, there is a uh, hardware store known as Maison Hardware. Apparently it's French. Three, there's apparently a purchase at the beer store. Don't know what that's for. Four, apparently there was a convenience store downtown and five seems that they have uh, went back to the hardware store once again. Plus they have your drill. I almost forgot about that drill. Shouldn't though. Are all these places downtown? Yes. Can you, can you like do the thing where you triangle all of the places and then you fi find the, the middle, the pin and... And that's where they are? Let me see if I can triangulate. He types triangulate into the computer and just hits enter. No! Forward slash triangulate. Oh, that's a good idea. Forward slash triangulate. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Can, can I, is there a physical map somewhere I can grab? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, just over there. And just shows you where his pinup board is. Where you can see there's just a bunch of like pieces of string tied to, in all various different places Th thanks uh, I, g I go to the map and I, I put my finger on the point the hardware store and so on and so forth oh isn't that funny uh, interesting little tidbit here the credit card was just used what like right now yes gas station G ga gas no it's uh, it's in McWorthy's you know, far side of town. Closer to the park. Let's go! And I run out the door and I come back and go, Ma let's drive, actually. Alrighty. What are you guys taking? You guys taking the moped? <laughs> yeah, the moped rules. Let's go. <laughs> I'll squeeze back in. Uh, Jenny, are we leaving you Are we leaving you at McPherson's while Hope puts up your suit? Well, what if you need me? I mean, I'm tired, but... Can you, the three of you just, like, squish on the seat? So, so, somebody else can sit behind me on the seat, probably. And you might... I can probably do that. It'd be like a circus act. I could stand on your uh, shoulders. That'd be awesome! Yeah! I don't believe in your ability to do that, unfortunately. It's okay, Kit. We can, we can practice another day. I've done this kind of thing plenty of times. Just not on a moped, you know? Let's go! Alrighty. Which point you guys uh, hit the road, uh, squeeze together on the moped, 
Uh, I would like Olivier to please make a body move check. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Uh, do I get any pluses since I've done this a few times now? <laughs> right, Olivier. You know what? I'll right count now. this as a plus two item. <laughs> oh, wow. Thank you. Holy shit. Uh, that was seven dice. I didn't get anything. <laughs> Can I clear anything from resting in the hideout for a little bit? Oh, uh, what conditions do you have? Um, upset and scared and injured. <laughs> I'd say you can get up, get rid of upset and scared. The The next time you visit the hideout, that condition will also be taken care of. So at which point for, uh, for Olivier, you are driving as fast as you can. But the problem is you're still new to town. You don't know the best ways of getting around. Uh, by the time you get to the gas station, which is on the south side of town in the wash, as you stop at the gas station, there's no one there. You can see that there is an attendant who's uh, out in the, uh, what is it, the front section of the actual gas station. Uh, but aside from that, nothing. Shit. Uh, just, one of you guys go talk, go ask the convenience, the, go ask the clerk where they went? Uh, I run over. Kit hops off the back and uh, kind of run and skips over to the attendant. Hey, I've got a question for you. Um, my friends and I were looking for my friend's brother, and uh, we were supposed to follow him to our next destination, but I think they're playing a trick, and they sped off quicker than we could like follow to see where they were going after getting some new gas. Um, would have been like a, probably a group of guys, Riley, and I describe what I would know Riley to look like to this guy, and I'm like, can you just tell us what way he went? Mm, sorry, didn't notice any blonde guys. But they, they they were here. They used a a credit card. There was no blonde guy using a credit card. Then who 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 else was? What about a brunette? Was a dude with frizzy brown hair. Yeah. So wait, do you want to know more about the blonde guy or the frizzy brown hair guy? The frizzy brown hair guy is sounding really good right now. <laughs> Please make a heart charm roll <laughs> with a, a negative one. <laughs> Yeah, I got nothing. Uh, sorry, just don't want to. Not really uh, interested in giving out, you know, client information. Seems uh, a little bit suspect. Also, are you old enough to drive that kid? I have the helmet on with the rad everything, right? What's it to you? What do you think? Hmm. Man, that kid fucking rules. All right. <laughs> I'm going to go up to him. Well, here, uh, let me handle this, guys, and go, maybe my good friend here Adam. can <laughs> get you to loosen your lips, and I hand him, like, a handful of pennies and maybe <laughs> a few dimes. Just nickel and diming him. Look, if any of you've got a 20. I mean, sure. All right, yeah, the assholes that you're looking for uh, goes down that way over towards the park. Don't know what they'd be doing out there, though. What do you mean? Well, I mean, not a whole lot out there. Just goes further down south into Mass. But as far as around there, that's the old industrial district. So there's an old glue factory. There's also, uh, well, there's a few houses scattered around there. A few farming people. They're called farmers. Hmm? Farming people. The word is farmers. I learned that. Hmm. Sure. Um, yeah, I call for the bow head. You guys got We got everything? Let's go. <laughs> yeah. You know, pile in. There is a distinct difference in Kit's walk back to the moped uh, since her skip over to this. Were you, like, being me? I just, I don't know, Jenny. Like, you're injured and hurt, and I was just trying to help, and I didn't do a good job, and I'm sorry, okay? Uh, I really am sorry, but... Um, hey, no, 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 I mean, Kit, I'm not offended. Okay. I'm saving the day anyway, so let's go back to the park. No, I know. It's kind of cute, actually. I was just gonna say we we all have different skills and it's it's always good to practice those different skills that we're not as, as good at, right? Like I'm not as tough as Baxter, uh, I'm not as smart as you, uh, and Jenny's uh, like also not as smart as you. We all have different <laughs> things to talk about each other, is what I'm trying to say. You know, we're all good in different ways. Boy, you think you're <laughs> slick, huh? Okay. All right, buddy. <laughs> 
Let's go. <laughs> uh, so in which case, you guys exit out of the gas station and you are at your moped. What would you like to do? My thought is that they were going down to maybe the industrial area to test out this drill of theirs to see if it can, you know, do what they it wants they want it to do. Oh. So should we try the glue factory? That seems that seems sensible to me, honestly. Uh, in which case, you guys drive forward down past the national uh, what is it? The Freeman National Park. Or sorry, the Freeman Memorial Park. Uh, you guys drive past just a little bit before you see on the right hand side uh, what look to be a series of old decrepit and broken down factories uh, as you guys are driving across you guys come to a slight intersection where you take the right hand at this t-junction as you drive forward and before it hits into uh, a overgrown gravel like driveway this main section there are, are uh, what looks to be a series of fences that block off the way, uh, including what looks to be a large uh, wrought iron gate that has been chained shut. It doesn't look like anybody's been here recently or has lifted the gate or their tire tracks, maybe? Uh, make a mind investigate check. Can I look around too? Yep. So you can take a plus one. That's two successes, baby. Thanks, Jenny. You hop out of the moped for a moment, looking around. Uh, you immediately notice uh, that there are relatively new tire tracks that come up this path. They've created a, a bit of a new groove in the road. Uh, also, the, the fence uh, that you see, you can actually see that uh, where the chain had wrapped around the wrought iron gate, uh, it's been convincing from afar but once you get close you can already see that the padlock has been smashed and has just been hooked in on the other side just to make it look like it's still chained up but has been broken guys check it out oh that's a cool he showed me that trick before yeah i think we're on the right track at least we don't have to break in ourselves i make my way in yeah baxter you take point on this one i think that's a good idea oh thank you i'm the most leaderly okay so are you guys traveling in further on the moped, or are you guys sticking to walking? I imagined us on foot. Dude, you can hear that moped a mile away, fucking whining. <laughs> Give away our position. Which point you unchain the gate as it... Uh, at which point, as you guys are... You unwrap the gate, stick the moped off to the side, kind of behind a, a, a local tree, as you guys travel up this gravel... Uh, at this point, mostly just getting to just grass with gravel pieces in it. Uh, you can see that up ahead of you, as you walk maybe 200 feet, uh, these massive ruins, massive stone walls that have crumbled and fell in onto themselves. You can see what look to be second story floors that have collapsed, creating a large variety of what almost look to be internal alcoves in the area you can see what looks to be massive smokestacks are still built and still in place uh, you do spot one or two that have begun to collapse and tilt but the vast majority of them remain intact you can see that there are uh, a wide variety of vegetation that has begun to re-dominate this space uh, turning this once, what you can imagine, these massive titans of just an industrial design back into this almost, uh, like, like almost fantastical ruin kind of design with ivy spread across multiple of the walls going into windows. Um, and as you look ahead of you, you... you See nothing. Do we hear anything? Does it sound like anybody's fucking around with anything? Make a mind make a mind comprehend check. Is the caved in building kind of like a big bowl or is it sort of like 
unevenly collapsed across itself. There's one on each, on either side of the road. Uh, the one on the left seems to have collapsed in more. The second one seems to be the more, probably like the main building. Looked like the left-hand side one was maybe a series of offices that was connected to the bigger structure. Uh, that The bigger structure seems to be a bit more intact. Uh, that's one success, by the way. One success, you are kind of listening. You hear the chirping of birds. You can hear slight skitterings of squirrels kind of running up trees. A little bit of chittering. Don't hear anything. I'll, I'll slowly um, crutch over to the building that looks more intact. Start poking around and see if I can get inside it. Yeah, we can. I was going to fan out as well. Uh, I'll say, well, Jenny, you're looking for a way inside. Uh, Olivier, you're fanning out. What are you looking for? I guess I'm. I guess I'm mostly looking for more tracks. I'm. Uh, Olivier's assuming that they brought this drill thing to, you know, test out or something like that. So I guess I'm looking for like if they dragged it or if there if there's heavy tread where they, if they were holding it, because it couldn't have been light. Please make another investigation check. I want to help support in that, like, looking just for signs, like signs of where they would have entered or signs of, like, exactly the, the yoking of what these two are doing. And so in which case, Kit, you can uh, give Olivier a plus one. Uh, for Jenny, uh, initially looking at the structure, uh, you can see that the baseline windows have been broken, smashed into. There is a slight doorway that has what looks to be some sort of chain wrapped around it uh, to keep it closed. Uh, make a quick mind comprehend check. One success. This place is pretty well closed as far as conventional entrances. You might have to get a bit funky to find other entrances that will allow you access. Uh, Olivier. With Kit's help, that is three successes. Woo! We're, a, we're we're sleuths. We're Nancy Drew and the Hardy Boys over here. All right. Uh, you guys continue following the tread marks left by what is seemingly uh, some sort of large vehicle. As you guys cut around, you can actually see they follow back into uh, behind the actual building where you can spot out in the tree brush a little bit farther away you can see what looks to be a slight moving, almost like a waving kind of movement. As you look, f as you focus further, and you can spot that it's a green tarp, the edge of which that is kind of fluttering in the wind. As you guys begin to approach closer, you can see that this green tarp has been put up in the foliage, uh, up, uh, essentially up, m more lengthwise upwards, as a way to disguise, as you take a look behind, uh, a to you two, a unfamiliar vehicle, uh, but to Baxter, a very familiar sunbird. Okay. Hey, that's pretty good. Thanks, Kit. I, I, uh, what's it? Can we look inside of it? Uh, you take a look around. Uh, it looks, you, you kind of, uh, I'll say... I'll say Kit, with, with the assist, has this moment of, oh, yes, uh, li like remembering this from like a cop show that you've seen. You touch the exhaust pipe uh, to see how warm it is, uh, and it's still quite, quite warm. As you guys kind of look from the vehicle, you look back towards the actual ruins, and you can see that there's a ladder that has been set up going into the, one of the second story windows where you can see another distant blue flap seemingly blocking out one section from above. I, I wonder why they're being so secretive. There's like nobody around. They're doing crime. Oh, oh yeah, right, right, crime. What do you want to do, Baxter? Should we just like yell? No, because if we yell, then they're going to think we're, we're people who stop crime whether that's police or CIA or FBI. I don't think we can really pull off FBI. But hey, Bax, 
You're the one with the big brain right now, so what's our best course of action? Yeah, fearless leader. Baxter really enjoyed that, whether or not it was said in jest. We need to get inside, is what we need to do. Because if we shout from outside, then they they can run maybe or hide inside or just ignore us. And I don't want to be ignored ever. How high up is it? Can we barrel of monkeys? What's it looking like? Well, it's a la there's a ladder, right? Oh, so... I just thought it would be a cute bonding exercise, guys. Sorry. <laughs> we, we can still we can still barrel of monkeys. Cool. I think you should go first, Fax. Okay, but the teacher said they had guns, so I don't want to get shot more. Well, it did, Ty Tyson, did uh, the report state whether they fired back? Uh, they said they fired back, but it was later determined that they were cap guns. No, they don't. They don't have. They have. They don't have pew pew guns. They have pop pop guns. So I think we're okay. Like like prop guns, yeah. Yeah, like pop guns. Okay, well I guess I'll be the lookout. I guess because it's a ladder. Yeah, I don't know how well you could climb that ladder. That's fair. Very good point. Wait till your exoskeleton, or your flying ship, or everything. Yeah, go. Yeah, let's let's get let's go for it. Let's get let's do. It. Alrighty, are you guys trying to move quietly, or are you just climbing up? Uh, not necessarily full on stealth on my end, but I'm certainly not like clambering up. I'm definitely trying to be stealthy. Uh, I'll I'll follow. I think I think Olivia's kind of like, okay, Bax has got this, but Kit's really Kit's really pulling through. I'm gonna follow what Kit's Kit's doing right now. So I'm gonna take her lead and uh, stealth, or at least try. Okay. At uh, which point, uh, Kit and Olivia, please make uh, body sneak rolls. Nothing. Got one. Okay. At uh, which point, Baxter. Uh, moving calmly, but not not necessarily quietly. You make it up to the top. Uh, Kit, you are si uh, you you are silent, but you can hear consistently down below. You are <coughs> as the wooden uh, bars of the ladder are squeaking under uh, Olivier's excitement. We're, we're like doing counter crime, counter crime. I I uh. I kind of look down, I give him a little smile, like, it's just, there's nothing we can do. I just smile, and I'm like, hey, thumbs up. <laughs> big thumbs up, big thumbs up for me, Gr ear to ear grin. <laughs> Counter cry. At which point, Baxter, as you're, as you're reaching the apex of the window, you hear, what, well, look, I thought that would be fun. You know, is, look, I don't understand, I don't understand why you're getting so upset about this, huh? It's like, you're not supposed to be fucking around with this sort of shit. Guns are were not part of the plan. This is not what we're supposed to be doing here. Well, look, 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 look. I'm not saying that we have we are gonna use them. Besides the toys, they'll like this is more just to scare the like regular people, like the normal clerks behind the desk. They don't know what a fucking gun looks like. Just have them on hand. They're just strictly for security. All right. It's a stupid idea. Look, we, we've already got a hamstring strung plan already. Like, why not have a little bit extra? Shh! You guys hear that? <coughs> as Baxter, you hop uh, hop inwards, as you can uh, immediately see one figure turning around towards you. A slightly broad gentleman uh, with a black leather jacket, this frizzy brown hair, turned towards you uh, as you recognize Levi looking forward incredulously at you as you see following behind him uh, a little bit more lanky but still full presence outwards as you can see your brother step out just what the f I told I told you not to catch a tail I, I didn't fucking think I did Riley hi <sighs> hey hey kid and he comes up and he wraps his arms around you and gives you a hug. <sighs> I'm just going to take my moment on the grass to like sit down and hang out with flashlight for a second and just sort of think about the day because a lot has happened. And I'm going to think about my mom too and Kit and her mom and my dad and my grandparents and Riley and Hope in the loop in my leg and cheerleading and Jess for a while 
Kit's like uh, pulling apart a dandelion. Sorry, just to clarify. So, Kit, you decided to go up. Once you figured out that Olivia was t- taking, making too much noise, you decided to come back down again? Yeah, I was really stealthy about it. I, I, I flipped around and I like held, I did the thing where you just slightly hold on to the sides of a ladder. You kind of go, shh, down. Ah! You pass like <laughs> in front of me. Wait, what? I thought we were going up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I zoned out and wanted to, I thought of dandelions. I just figured I might be on the grass for a little bit. <laughs> flashlight just kind of hanging out like like just on your chest just kind of waddles around a little bit yeah i'm definitely like lying on my back looking up into the sky looking up at the sky you see blue skies some clouds the occasional coming from uh hmm. well since you got clear skies here you would be able to see coming from the east uh, what looked to be like large, but like basically like sea ships uh, that are flying about a thousand feet in the air. Magnetrine ships just traveling from the coast to further cities, whether they be New York further north uh, to Boston, just a little bit more north of here, or even heading to Baldur City or more to nearby coastal areas but yeah you just enjoy the view all right so as as the group of you are relaxing on the grass outside uh baxter your brother just looks over what the hell are you doing here i've been you you just vanished you didn't say you didn't have a note yeah there was a fucking point to that well what is the point tell me then well the point is to not get you into the shit well good job i'm in it so May as well tell me what's going on then. Look, you... You should go home, lay low. Just don't worry about me, okay? What are you doing, Riley? (sighs) We're gonna lose the house. We're gonna lose the house if if we don't... If I don't do something about it, alright? Not your responsibility. That's what our parents are for. Yeah. And look how far they fucking got us, huh? Okay, well, there are other ways you can do... You can go get a job, or you can sell stuff. No, kid. Get a gig. I can work also. I help you. I can get a job, too. (sighs) Look, I took this on. Because I'm the big brother here. All right? You're the... You're... I've been a fuck up for a while. There's only a certain amount of fucking up you can do before you're in a bit too deep. You're supposed to be the kid that goes and changes the world out there. I'm supposed to be the kid who gets stuck back home, does shit he doesn't really want to, but he does it. That's a choice you're making. You don't have to... You're choosing to be the one that makes bad decisions. You don't have to do that. Just come home. Forget this. Just come home. We'll, we'll figure something out, okay? We don't need to involve mom and dad, but you can involve me. What are we going to do, kid? Hmm? We can go sell scrap. I, I, Mr. McPherson can give us some scrap, and we can, or we can sell scrap to him, or we can go... It's not going to be fast enough. Okay, well, how fast do we need it to be? We have two weeks. Why do we need the stupid house then, okay? Why don't we just live out of your car or, or something? What do you need a big old house for? You, you want to you try being homeless, kid? It's not homeless. Yes, it is. Okay, well, what, what... See, here's the thing. Here's the thing. There's the shit that we go through, and then there's the real shit. We've been lucky... And you have been really lucky that you haven't had to go through the real shit yet. And I hope you never do. Mom and Dad didn't want us to go through that. But yet, here we are. One of us has to. And I'm willing to take the more shit because it's who I am. 
but you're you're being selfish you're only thinking about how this affects you you're not thinking about how it affects everyone around you how it affects me if something happens to you you don't even know how much i've had to deal with because of your mistakes how the sheriff is always on me how every teacher at school doesn't trust me because of the decisions you've made so it's not just on you it's on me too make a heart charm check one success yeah you know why they're on you kid because you're the golden boy they don't talk to me like that anymore they did at one time i'll give them that but after a certain amount of time the adults give up like I said, you're supposed to be the good kid. Don't let my mistakes be your mistakes. Don't follow me out here. That's how you're supposed to do it. How am I supposed to do that? If I'm left alone and having to come track you down, how does that help me then? Don't look. Well, that's not your, that's my choice. If we're talking about making choices, that's one I made. Do you understand the hip, 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 the, how backwards it is? that you are sitting here telling me not to make the choices that I want to, but you're not listening to me when I'm standing here telling you not to chase, make the choices that you are making. I don't want to make these decisions. These de decisions have been made for us. And what if, what if you fail today? What if it doesn't go right, and then we're in an even worse place? What if you get caught, or you get hurt, or something, and then suddenly we don't even have you anymore to help us, and we're in in debt, and we lose our house, and we have to live out of your car, and we're homeless, or you say. How does that help us anymore? As far as I can tell, it's the only shot we got. Well, it's a stinky one, okay? And I don't think it's gonna work. Do you have any better ideas? You can ask me. That's what you can do. That's the better idea. Instead of running off and thinking because you're the big brother. I ask you, ask you what, Ask kid? me for help. B you can trust me. I'm big enough. You're telling me I'm smart and I can make these decisions and I'm the golden boy, so let me. Fine. Fine, kid, you're right. You got any ideas of how to figure out how to get 10 grand in less than two weeks? We can start by you not going and getting shot on some weird crime spree. That's the first thing we can do. So you don't have to rob a lot of places if you can just win at one place. If you just, over there, and I pointed and was probably totally the wrong direction, there's a competition happening tonight where you just have to be the bestest, coolest skateboarder in the world, or in town at least, and you can win every dollar we need. Right there, tonight. I've... Levi, do you skateboard? Sorry, that's not really my thing. I don't skateboard either. Okay. Well? Do you know a skateboarder? Who would be willing to give us all of the prize earnings? I'm willing to give it a shot, at least. Look, just give me tonight, okay? All right, kid. If you can figure it out by tonight, and if you can come back to me with that money, then we got a deal. All right. Got it. Got it. Good. Thank you. And maybe pick a place that's less infested. There's just endless squeaking around here. Olivier finally gets up the ladder, huffing and puffing. <laughs> okay. Oh, I mean, it's I not. If you just Master, want to, I know you're a visual again, person, poster. so uh, here's here's the poster, uh, please. Cool. Hello, Mr. Riley. Sorry, Hello. do I know you? It's a, it's a big ladder, you guys. He's. He, Woo. He's he's cooler than he looks. Oh hi no no we're fr I'm 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 friends with, with Baxter. Do you guys get any water? Oh uh, yeah, we got some water. Oh All right. cool. I ride a moped. The helmet has flames on it. He does a great gangster accent. Listen. So what what kind of what kind of gangster should I be? Should I be like 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 from London or 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 maybe like like because you know everyone goes with gangster they go with like the Italian one but there are gangsters all over the place. Yeah, yeah, you 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 you're, you're non-conforming. Right? At which point Levi's just like, and what a fucking dweeb. But before Riley's like, I will push you out a goddamn window. Yeah, you're you're friends with Baxter. You're friends with us. So apparently you guys know a skateboarder. That's pretty cool. We do. She's awesome. It's a girl. Yeah, you could say she's got bionic legs. Cool, sure. Trust us. We we'll, we we'll, can we can we'll we'll be able to get you out of this. Yeah, you'll be you you don't have to do all the stuff you were thinking of potentially doing that I would know nothing about. 
How did you all figure out what where we were, what we were doing? Sleuthing. We've got a Nancy Drew downstairs. She's awesome. Huh. Cool. All right. Well, time's ticking. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, we'll we'll be back. And don't go anywhere. Okay. Stay here and play some play some cards or something. We'll be back. Olivia, you go down first. Uh, okay. Uh, I try to do the cool thing that Kit did going down the ladder. <laughs> burn your hands. I just try to burn my hands completely. <laughs> ah! Oh, I got a splinter! Ah! Oh, it's huge! Oh! Do we have tetanus shots yet? Because we should invent those. Olivier! I run over and I, I go, it's okay, it's okay, here, let me see. And I and I begin, I feel like, I feel like I'm prepared. I have, I have, I have tweezers in my, in my bag that I always carry around. I'm gonna try to remove your splinter. Kid, it feels like a dagger. All right. <laughs> okay. I'm being honest. Uh, don't tell me I'm being dramatic. You're not allowed to tell me that. <laughs> okay, so uh, all we need to do is convince Jenny to skateboard, and then we need to come back here with the magic cha changing machine, because there's so many talking rodents in there. We gotta turn them all back into humans. Anyways, we do that after. Well, I feel like we definitely have to ask Jenny if she's cool with that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, but I do know a really good skateboarder. Do you? Jess. Who's Jess? From my squad. She's gay, apparently. Yeah, I liked her hair. Okay. She does Wait, have cool hair. Wait, why did you specify that? Do you not, it was, was like... She does have cool hair. Two hours ago. Do you not remember? Just no one listen to me? I think, I think she has a cousin named Tony, but I don't feel like talking to him. Okay, so can we convince... I was gonna, I was gonna say something, and then I thought it'd be weird, so I won't say it. But can we convince Jess of no specific conforming gender identities or sexual orientations, who might be willing to help us? Well, she is. I think. So do I just call you straight? Je do I call you straight Jenny all the time now? If you want. That'd be kind of funny. That'd be a little funny. Are you straight? I don't. Why are we asking these Wait, questions? We don't have to do this. You started it! I didn't start it! You said gay you Jess. absolutely did. You said gay Jess. She is! You guys, I think... I think we're getting caught up on something that maybe we'll have more clarity on all of us um, at a later date for ourselves and other people will also have more clarity on their things. I think right now, let's go see if Jess would be down. She might already even be in the competition. Okay, so then we just have to tell her True. to give us $10,000, and it'll be easy. Oh. I mean, I don't know if she would, but we could try at least. Yeah, well, we need... Should we go to... So. Where do you get a skateboard? Just in case. We need a plan B. Well, Jess probably has a skate... We, 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 you get it at Walmart or something. General store. The same place I got your crutches. They had a, they had a really big selection there, honestly. I, they, they were very close to selling me a gun. We already have guns. We have lots of guns. I don't have a gun anymore, because it's being cold being turned into a super cool exoskeleton that's just made for me because I asked for it special and you guys didn't so you should have asked for something special too. Yeah, sure, but you we you'll get that eventually. So should we go to the record diner? That is where Jess works. Right. Oh, awesome. It's like you guys don't even pay attention. We get milkshakes. We go see my friend. You guys hop back in the moped, driving over to the Matter Hatter. Uh you guys step inside where you can see uh, what, who seems to be, uh, what is it, Mads, balancing yes. a few books on the top of his oh, head, boy. sitting in the center of the store, with what looks to be a, a pipe in one side of his mouth, a spliff in the other, as he's just going, So you see, this is the true sign of divinity. In the great scheme of the universe, it's balanced. The balancing of all things. Add another one on there, Jess. As you just see Jess just nearby, just looking at this, just entirely unfeeling, just sure, sure, boss. Just kind of sets one on. Oh, not too harsh now. Mm. Wait, I forgot something. Good. Try and back everyone out before they notice us. Okay, so I think the Jess that was in... I don't remember if I said this before. It was like a different dimension, Jess. You saw a different dimension, Jess? Yeah, she was like from a different dimension or something where we were missing or whatever. But it, I don't think it was this one. So <gasps> don't mention the K-I-S-S. -S. We didn't even know about that. 
Do you know about that? Do we know about that? I talk literally all the time, you guys. I don't know what more I can do. Truly. Yeah, and I just kind of... I don't... You, wait, you, you... Are you... Are you... Did you ki kiss a you guys like, girl? You guys like dating? No, we're you not dating. Like, yes, I can... Yeah. That's why I think she is gay. I think you make a really cute couple. Okay. Just say it. Do you want to kiss her again? I don't know. Guys, leave Jenny alone. And Why? Just she don't keeps bringing this stuff no, up. Saying, We're not doing saying, it. Don't no, no, bring it's it up. Context. I am it's saying, context. Yeah. do not bring it up. We didn't know it happened, and then you told us it happened, and then told us not. It's the only thing on my mind right now. <sighs> my brother's gonna get shot in a day, and I'm just thinking about you kissing another girl. No, he's not, girl. because we're gonna get ten thousand dollars from yeah, no, we're gonna a skate him. competition, and okay. it'll all work out. And Maybe... if we have to, I can steal the parent parents my parents' money. So whatever, you'll be fine. Or. Or you can, or you can kiss Skater Jess because she wants to kiss you. And if That's you say, "I'll kiss you," if you $10, give me money, it's not gonna get us ten thousand dollars. Yeah, how good a kiss is it? No, <laughs> you kiss your mom and dad, and there you're gonna get ten thousand dollars from them. Not so. in today's economy. Seems to be. Well, I don't know. My dad said I looked like a prostitute. Whoa! Earlier, so he's not what really. What the hell? Oh my god! Oh no, it's fine. He, uh, but like. Jenny, your dad's kind of. I don't think he's really pleased with me. Your right dad's kind now, of an asshole. So. Now, but... Hey. Not very yeah. nice. No, it's not. I'm sorry. Hey, Jenny, it sounds like there's a lot of stuff going on in your life that you kind of didn't tell us about, and it's all. Why is this all about me all You're of a the sudden? One... I just you wanted said to... so much right now that honestly is a little bit concerning, and I think maybe we should take a minute to just. Oh, really... now you're listening to me. I have done nothing but listen to you. I just chose to ignore most of it. Um, Kit, Kit steps into the store, and I go, I, I feel like we've, this is our spot, kind of, and I order everybody's orders. Like while you guys are talking, Kit just goes in and I do that. As you as you enter inside, you see Jess looks over. Oh, hey, hey, you, uh, Kit, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm Kit, and you're Jess. That's oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm mad. <laughs> yeah, here it is. <laughs> I and yeah, him. Uh, order. Cool. Begins walking to the back of the shop. I look back. Are they still? Can I still see if they're arguing and being weird? I'm li I'm like trying to mediate, but it's not working. <laughs> and he's like ping ponging, <laughs> and we're just like gesturing at each other through the window. Kit Kit attempts. Kit does her best to kind of like move closer to take up more space so that um Jess or isn't like seeing the mess in that... front. Yeah, Kit stretch. <laughs> oh, takes a big yawn and stretches her arms out and does the thing that Kilo yes. does. With, I don't know if I can in Hunter and just like stands there uh, with their hands behind <laughs> her Human head. Shield. Sorry, with their hands behind her head. At which point you see Jess comes it out with a tray in the uh, milkshakes, drops a strawberry milkshake for you with extra maraschino cherries. Thank you. You like uh, you like you like maraschino cherries? <laughs> Kit forgets that she's alone for a second and looks. Through. Yeah, yeah, they're my favorite. Cute. Walks out. I'm. I suppose that these three are for those three bozos. I look back and I go, Yeah, yeah, they're for my bozos. And, uh, <laughs> uh, we'll be right in. And I go outside and I go, come on, guys, guys, I, I care deeply for you all. Um, and I'm not good at this, this, this social thing. And you guys got to cut this out and come inside right now. I, I got the milkshakes. Let's relax a little. Okay. Yeah. We're all going to be cool. Baxter, you're going to be cool. Jenny, you're already cool. I am going to be good. Let's get in there. I I hand you each your milkshake as you go in in a cute, like, systematic... Yeah, it's cute. Ooh, dessert. I feel like I, I walk in, and without even skipping a beat, I put another book on Mads' head. I have trouble with having enough hands to take it. You're doing great. That's... Is that... Is that nine? That's, like... That's, like, more than last time. Thank you. Balance, man. It's all about the balance. You guys want a booth? Mind the cat's... How many cats are sitting in this booth? Three. <laughs> <laughs> Tyson, this may have been something that got brought up 11 weeks ago, but does this place just smell furiously like cat piss? Uh, surprisingly not. Surprisingly not. It, 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 
it smells actually quite immaculate. That's what I'm saying, guys. Uh, uh Jess. Hmm? Hi, nice to see you. Um, could you actually come to our booth with us for a sec? Sure. Kind of sets down the tray. Six ne- sits next to you, Jenny. What's up? So, you have a skateboard. Uh-huh. Did you hear there's a skate competition happening um, this evening? Yeah. Yeah, I was planning on popping by, see what it's about. Are you like a good skateboarder? No offense. Uh, I'm getting there. Why? Well. It would be really cool if the only thing that would had value to you was your own pride and worth of self being and no sort of monetary compensation. Why is Baxter acting like a creepy old white man? <laughs> <laughs> you can you can just ignore him. He's had a rough day. It's been a it's been a odd um yeah, it's been a really weird day. Uh so like let's say all five of us went to the skate competition and then let's also say that you entered and you're really good and then you win oh my gosh yay jess uh and then you uh give the prize money to baxter and his brother riley because they are experiencing financial hardship yeah, they're gonna lose their house if they don't make ten thousand dollars in the next two weeks. Not to like, not to like, um, blackmail you or, or anything. That kind of sounds like no, blackmail. No, 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 no. I was just, just being honest. I'm just wondering, because none of us are very good at skateboarding, honestly. And you're the only person I know who's like actually kind of good at it. No, that that's not true. Kind of points over to Kit. You're pretty good. Uh, Kit? Excuse me. Okay, uh, guys. Oh, guys, I've seen, I've seen her. Kit. Guys, I've skated before. What is this? Why were you trying to make me do it? Because, 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 because I feel like if we were to attach numeric values to our abilities, for some reason in my brain, <laughs> I feel like yours would be higher than mine. All right, but you have two legs that work. At full capacity. That's true, and and if you have like if if you've actually done it before and you're pretty good at it, hey, maybe fortune will smile on us. And I didn't think I was that good at it, but yeah. Wait, but does this mean? Hey, does this mean you're also gonna be skating in the competition? Mm. I mean that, or I can just give you pointers. Oh really? I was. Pointers is good. Pointers would really, really really help we're trying to do something really cool this is wild i didn't think i'd be able to do this you guys think okay i can skate i can skate of course (laughs) i feel really silly but i just mean like i'm a little insecure so like when i was talking about skateboarding and like where someone gets a skateboard and like how i knew a skateboarder and you just said nothing throughout all of that i said the skate shop and nobody heard me so speak up. Well, I mean, we can build you a deck here. Huh? What? Th- this place is also a skate shop. You look back and you can see that all of the books on top of Matt's heads have been replaced with skateboard decks. Um... Whoa, this place is a record place, store diner skateboard it shop? It's, it's never going to go out of style. And a used bookstore. Wow, this business is so sustainable. I go over and uh, pick out uh the whatever the length and the whatever the wheels i'm looking for was as you're he- heading over you, you do hear wait bah, 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 bah. before we get to all that before you can skate well on a new board you gotta skate well on a shitty one as jess just grabs a, her skateboard from the corner and tosses it over towards you show me what you can do okay skateboard montage skateboard montage Kit shakes her body out a little bit. Uh, take off your backpack. It's been a little bit. Um, I do take off my... Thanks, Jenny. I do take off my backpack. And uh, is it cool? Like, is it... Is it cool we do this in here? Or is, is yeah. This, is... Mads, do you give a shit? 
Okay. Please. Oh yeah, Mads doesn't give a shit. Skate to your heart's desire. Cool. Thanks. All things are temporary. That was a little unsettling. Um. Except taxes. Even taxes, all life, all matter, everything will die and end in pure entropy. So thus we must create in the face of such darkness. Will you pay my taxes? I don't even pay my own. Yeah, it's you in a business. <laughs> Technically, this shop does not exist. <laughs> what? <laughs> I get on the skateboard and I start to kick around. Uh, so for Kit, please make a body move check plus one. got one one uh you, you start skating around uh it's a little bit awkward uh however you see that jess uh starts to give you pointers about how to work in the actual corners of the shop just like yeah i skate around here all the time i've just kind of like set up this little arena thing uh go, go nuts with it uh so you're able to maneuver with the board pretty well it takes a little bit of getting used to with uh with a certain level of um Ah, uh, shit. Uh, tension that she has in her, uh, oh, fuck, on the trucks and whatnot. Um, getting pretty good. Uh, takes you a few tries, but you're even, even able to pop the board, get a, get a good ollie into the air. How about, like, jumping over a table and, like, the board going under the table and I jump over it? Sure. Does it pull, pulls the table, table, uh, around. All right, head down the main stretch. Soup. Do I roll again? Body move again. One. Move, for move forward. Crouch. <laughs> Jump, pull your legs close to your chest. <laughs> Come down hard on the board. There's a slight <clears throat> sound as, as if you're almost about to crack it in the center before you're able to <clears throat> very quickly, uh, what is it? Tail slide up against the door stopping yourself oh, that was rad uh which point can you um can you manual kickflip nollie yep show me let's do it two you es essentially push off the door go go into backside manual grab the front Flip it into a kickflip before catching it on the on board down again. You're a natural. Kit has a moment where Kit kind of goes very serious in the face because she's like, wait, does this mean I'm gay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but she quickly recovers and uh, keeps skating. <laughs> I have a flashlight out, like one of those um, L.A., you know, Guerrilla videographers. <laughs> Jesus Christ, please make uh, one last body move check. One. You do try the same trick again, doesn't go as flawless. However, as you are able to get into a, what is, into a nolly big spin where essentially you kick the board forward, big spin it, twist in the air, and then land back on your feet, you feel well warmed up. You, f you feel good. You feel like this could actually lead somewhere. I feel good. Give me a, give me a half an hour. At which point Jess heads into a side room. If uh, you guys want more milkshakes, you know where the shit is. And then continues heading. Hey, Baxter. I, uh, I call for Baxter and I motion for him to come, come over, come closer. You can pick what the deck is going to look like if you want. No, he can't. Oh. Aww. Raising my spirits and then crushing them immediately. Oh, I bet they've got those old-fashioned, like, coin sticker machines. Can know? I pick a sticker? Sure. Oh, I go browse the stickers. Uh, which point you begin searching through a few. I, I, I will allow you some creative liberty of exactly what sticker that Baxter would uh, would find and like. Thank you so much. It's an eagle and it's, its wings are blades and they're on fire. <laughs> You're able to <laughs> rip that off the side. Um, as, as it comes, uh, to about a half an hour, 45 minutes, uh, you guys have enjoyed your milkshakes. During that time, you've noticed, uh, smells a little bit, a little strange as you're kind of like looking to the, to, uh, where Jess is, you occasionally hear, oh, 
fuck me. As after closer to 45 minutes, you see she comes out. You can see that she is, uh, what is it? Has what looks to be like, um, uh, like rubber, like dishwashing gloves on, but they're covered, uh, in like vibrant paint. As you can see, she, she pulls a gas mask down across the front of her face, flip, flips the deck over. As you can see, it was just a regular, uh, blank deck. Uh, that across the sides and back, there's a bit of like a, uh, what is it? Like blues, blacks, and these like deep reds that kind of spine down the sides into this almost like cybernetic kind of uh, look to it, like a cyberpunk kind, kind of feel, where at the center you can see that there is a uh, closed-legged rat with six arms with a crown up the top that just says Rat Queen. <laughs> oh! Oh my god. Tosses it over to you, over to you, Kit. Wow! This is so cool. Jess! You're so cool! Wow, that looks so good. Uh... Hey guys, the implication is a weird now that we know the rats are dead, but it's fine. Um, Kit, uh, Kit gets confused for a second, and then... Okay, well, what are we doing? What time is it? This is all very overwhelming, but good, I think. Uh, it's getting close to seven. The competition's at eight. So you got about an hour. Was there anything on the poster about, like, what... Does it just say skate battle? It's a skate jam. Uh, you're, you're able to get some information out of, um, out of Jess. Well, uh, for the most part, a skate jam is... It's a relatively new kind of thing basically anyone can show up anyone can skate uh the competition will probably be like halfway through the allotted time after that who who's ever able to bring out the best day because they win but is it like on a big pipe or are there like handrails uh, it's the carve so it's probably more improvised uh there's a few good rails out on the on the carve uh decent quarter pipe uh, if they want to get real crazy, they might go the whole pipe. I've seen a, I've seen a few crazy people. They'll take off a slight ridge, dive down, uh, go the whole, revolve around the whole pipe like upside down twice, and then try to go off. No one's done it yet, but hey, you know. That sounds really dangerous. That sounds crazy. Kit, do you have a helmet? Do you want to use my moped helmet? <gasps> I would love to use your moped helmet. Oh my gosh, I didn't even think about that. Uh... Okay. If anyone can enter, should we, like, just all do it and, like, try to hit people? <laughs> so Kit wins. Jenny! Jen, the Jen Jen energy. Uh, the problem with that is that to try to do that, there's a possibility you're going to get your ass kicked. Well, it wouldn't be the first time today. And... and, and and I don't mean like I don't mean like a bunch of like high school kids. I mean like college kids who aren't afraid to pull out like I mean, I've seen crazy shit. They wouldn't just disqualify us? Jeez. Yeah, but they might see us arrive together and then, you know, know that you're trying to help me. That too. Okay. Maybe we can help you come up with a signature trick. That and maybe you can maybe uh yeah. Maybe those of us who know a lot more about skating can uh, support with um, some pointers while I'm doing it. If you're free and want to come still and want to hang out and cheer for us. I can hang out. Yeah, we could, we could just hang out. Oh, what if we get them all drunk? Jenny! <laughs> they're, they're college kids. They're probably already drunk. College kids are drunk all the time is what I hear. We could get them like extra drunk. And then they wouldn't be able to skate. Unless they're engineering students. I hear those. They can drink a lot. My mom has some stories. Actually. Hard to say. But y you know what? Maybe. Which point. Uh, Kit, as you're kind of admiring the board. As uh, Olivier and Jenny are kind of having a. Uh, like having this discussion back and forth of strategizing. Uh, Jess comes up to you, Kit. And it's like. Oh. 
Just wanted to give you something. As she pulls out a sticker and just taps it on your board. Uh, I say, just for luck. Cool. Thanks. And then I flip my board over and I look at the sticker. What is it? Uh, you can see it's a pair of lips. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Before, before ah! she just looks at you, eee! turns, and begins to walk towards the back. Let me just get changed, nerds. Um, Kit, Kit, Kit is <laughs> laughing. <laughs> But kid, also, I kind of clap my hand over that part of the board and I flip it towards myself and I'm like, hey, hey, hey woo, skating. I'm excited and I don't, I don't advertise this to any of the gang. Um, I mean, if we're going to go to the carve after this, should I go pick up my exoskeleton? Do you think it'll be ready by now? I don't know. I mean, we could call, does anyone know Mr. McPherson's number? We could call. Do you think he has a phone? He has a phone to tap other phones. He does He does technically have a phone. We could just pick up the phone and say, Hey, Mr. McPherson, are you listening? Hello? The only way to contact Mr. McPherson is that thing where, like, where you used to be able to hack phones by like using a special whistle from a cereal box. And it was like the exact tone that was needed for the operator. You can also check the yellow pages. Is he in... He wouldn't That's, be in a published you're, government book. You're a book. genius. This, he lives at the dump. The dump has a phone. Yeah, the dump has a phone. I, I go to the phone behind the counter. <laughs> you, you push D-U-M-P and wait. Uh, you find McPherson scrap. Uh, give it a call. Ring, ring. Ring, ring. This is uh, not Mr. McPherson scrap. Mr. McPherson. It's Olivier. You don't have to lie to me. Uh, I'm not lying. No, uh... Okay, you want, do, you, do you want me to prove it? Do you want me to prove it's, it's, it's me? I, I saw you... If there was a code word... Uh, the code word mm -hmm. is... Ratman. Mm, I don't know what that that's about. However, if I hypothetically knew what that was about, I'd be very interested... <laughs> Give me but a moment. <laughs> moment passes. Olivier! Olivier! Yes! You should not call me on a public number. We, you don't know who's listening. I'm calling you from the Matter Hatter. It's okay. Who is the Matter Hatter? M Mads, I think. I, th I figured you guys would know each other. I do not know anyone named the Matter Hatter. I know the Mad Hatter, but that's a different person entirely. I didn't realize there was a Matter Hatter compared to the Mad Hatter. No, it's it's a milkshake place slash bookstore slash tea shop slash coffee shop slash cat lounge. That sounds calming, which is the exact opposite of my vibe. Yeah, but Mad smokes a lot of weed, too. Tea was created by the government to mass okay uh, listen make a i just mass I, wellness yeah, calmness I know, campaign I know. I know can you can you please put hope on the line we're trying to see if the exoskeleton's done for jetty i'm gonna shake olivier's arm ask about hope ask about hope all right all right yeah he was really he was like harsh on the vibe about the place Hello. hey hope hi uh hey how's it going it is good is there something i can help you with Oh, well, we just want to check about the uh, the exoskeleton for uh, for for Jenny, because we so we found. I'll give you the TL the the long story short. We found somebody. We kids actually gonna go do the skateboard competition to save Baxter's uh, brother. Uh, so she's it's 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 in like an hour. So we w and it's in an hour. We want to know if we could pass by your place if the thing was ready. Get Jenny in there, and then she could join. She could you know walk around and stuff like a normal person. Yes, yes. Uh, the exoskeleton is complete. Uh, just have her come by at any point to, uh, come and pick it up. Awesome! Okay, Jenny, it's ready! Nice! Okay, thanks, Hope. Uh, I'll talk to you, I'll see you soon, okay? Very soon. All right. Goodbye. Thanks! Bye! Olivia was this close. I, I was so close to saying I love you, so... <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think Olivia was Olivia this close <laughs> to, to <laughs> saying I love you to Hope. Kind of, like, stops and looks at the phone for a second and goes, oh, man. Okay, yeah, no, we're good. <laughs>
Okay, but like, I don't really want people to know about the Oaken Bray Eggle. Um, so we should like go and then come back or something. For sure. If I stay and train with uh, Jess, do you Get think that would way? help at all? More time to practice can be help. Uh, can be helpful. I think I'm gonna stay and practice. That that sounds good. You and Jess can meet us. Uh, meet us there. Cool, Jess. We'll see you. Uh, we'll see you later. We're just gonna get go get some food and also get something for Jenny. Do you want us to get you anything? No, I'm good. But uh, appreciate the ask. Cheers. Yeah. No. No. No sweat. You rule. And I close the door. <laughs> Which point Jess just looks over towards you. So you wanted more practice with pointers? Yeah, I need to get I need to get some crazy skills down. I haven't done a lot of cool tricks and I just need I just need to work on my technique. You worked out a big spin. I think you're pretty good. I I I, I got confidence. Okay. Well, I'm going to practice and get ready and stretch out and stuff. And uh Kit does that. Jess follows suit. She she also starts doing some stretches and practicing. Uh Kit does her, Kit maintains distance. Um, and, you know, yeah, Kit, 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 <laughs> Kit's like, yeah, so, my friends are pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're dope. Yeah, well, Baxter's having, like, a, a rough day, um, but Olivia is always there with something funny to say to lighten the mood, and, um, and Jenny's actually, like, really caring when you get to know her, actually, right? She's pretty cool. Yeah, she can she can bit have a bit of a hard shell sometimes, but I know a lot of good people that are like that. Yeah, often I find that's the case for a lot of people. You get you get very few who are really kind at the outset, who are genuinely kind. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah, I guess so. Not really, but um, you know, I can respect it. No, I mean it's like you and your friend uh, Olivier. Like, right, right from the beginning, you, you guys were really nice, and it wasn't because you wanted anything. You were just nice. That's rare. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's just the way to be, I guess. But sometimes it's cool to be, you know, sometimes I wish I kind of had the... I don't know. Jenny's just, like, really good at, at like, talking to people. Um... And I think it gives her a lot of, like, it's like a superpower. Even Baxter. Baxter gets really annoying sometimes, but he's so sure of himself. And don't get me wrong, me too. I'm about to do the skating competition. But I feel like less people would, would, would give me a hard time if I were more like them sometimes. That's all. Anyway, they're really cool. Um, and Jen, Jennifer's really cool. And then I just keep, I, I go back to skating and doing things. Uh, Jess follows suit. Uh, you're keeping your, your distance, Jess. She doesn't uh, approach you any further. She just, just, just like just as as much as like two people skating together. That's about as much. At which point, <clears throat> uh, Jess eventually locks up before uh check kind of poking her head in with Mads like. You uh, you good to like a uh, setup for tomorrow, Mads? As Mads has replaced all of the skateboard decks with just plates, he's now gotten to about fifteen or twenty, where now the cats are putting the plates up on them. Mm, balance. At this point, shuts the door, locks up. Ready? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> At which point, you guys begin skating towards the carve. Which point for Olivier, Baxter, and Jenny, you guys uh, quickly take the moped back to McPherson's scrap, hop into the back, where you can see Hope is set up with what looks to be a, um, it, it's, it, it's surprisingly lightweight looking. It seems to be, uh, as you're looking it over, it's a full leg brace that goes up to your hip and then connects halfway across your hip and seems to divert the weight evenly between your two legs. Um, 
However, uh, you do notice that it is, it is a little bit interesting. It It's very light. It hardly feels like anything. It's a little bit... Um, uh, not bulky, but more a little bit more restrictive when you're bending your knee. Uh, however, you're looking it over, and um, as you kind of sit with it for like 10 minutes, uh, Hope just says, and so uh, if you require uh, is it any time to take it off, all you have to do is flick uh, this, uh, was it kind of pulls out a handheld, this switch. Uh, it's currently in its off setting. The on setting is like such clicks it as you feel the metal and the material like almost like this um <clears throat> like partial plastic just sh like tighten around your leg so it like clamps itself very similar to how flashlight clamps on your shoulder and after that's done it feels like it's just part of your leg i love this robot shit oh my god that's incredible that's cool. I'm going to do a couple, like, light tests of it in case it doesn't work and it hurts. Not a light test, buddy, but okay. I'm not going to kick something, but I, if my light test goes well, I'll graduate to a bit a bit more of a bouncier test and then, like, a like a cartwheel or something. That's convenient, yeah. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm very thankful that you and Trust were the same height. Wait a second. Wait, is this um, trust? Is this uh, is this trust? Uh, it was part of trust at one point. Yes. Oh, okay, but trust still like <laughs> exists. Yes. No. It kind okay. of motions over to trust, where you see trust, uh, is now a floating torso for the most part. Oh, uh, it's like, cool. So whatever part you chose not to use, the exoskeleton versus the, uh, mag uh, magnetine. I w was going to give the other to Trust, so Trust now floats. Well, okay. hi, Trust. Um, <clears throat> thank you for the leg. Oh. Is this okay? Yeah, you, oh, of you course. Look, you look rad as hell. Uh, to be honest, this is yeah, much cooler. Oh, nice. So wait, it's remote controlled? Yes, it is remote controlled uh, to activate it or deactivate it. Once activated, it will m remain clamped to your leg as long as you wish. Uh, I would suggest taking it off before going to sleep, though, just to... Just to be safe. Yeah, or if you're resting for a long time, or resting on top of it for a long time, if you're sitting for long periods, it'd be, I would suggest at the very least turning it off. Uh, we do not want to create uh, blood clots. Mm. Yeah. Are there any, like, stretches I should be doing? Or, like, physio? Uh, definitely take a light walk on it uh, after a day using it. Aside from that, uh, I wouldn't know any specific techniques. Maybe give it to massage every once in a while if, if you're starting to feel tense. And just like hypothetical question, which <laughs> I know sometimes people say that and it's not hypothetical, but this actually is because we figured it out, um, which I'm surprised by. If I were to try and skateboard on this, how do you think that would go? Uh, not particularly great. Okay, cool. Just wondering. Have you ever, well, have you ever skateboarded before? No. Well, then probably not once, great. <laughs> no, not really. I, so I guess we need to... Should we get dinner for Kit? I mean, she'll probably need fuel. Yeah, for sure. I was going to put some... I'm already putting, like, fruits and veggies into to-go bags. <laughs> Just, I mean, probably some protein is a good idea. Does anyone know what kind of food she likes? I don't think I've ever actually seen her eat. Yeah, I'm seeing a burger. We could stop at a drive through and as you guys drive the moped towards a uh, a simple uh, burger joint, you're able to pick up some food before driving off towards the carve. And that is where we're going to end off this episode. Ooh. Rat queen. Oh, rat yeah. Hashtag <laughs> if you're tweeting about this episode, you have to use the hashtag rat queen. <laughs> rat queen skates. Now we're getting to the experience point section of our episode. Question one, did you participate? Yes, everybody did. Number two, have you been in trouble because of your problem or your relationships? Hmm, sure have. Number three, did you use or struggle with your pride? Not that much risky business is up. I could have saved Kit, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that goes into the next question more. 
number four, did you put yourself at risk for the other kids? This episode was kind of low key. And number five, have you learned something new? Kit can skateboard. Kit can skateboard. <laughs> so, with all that being the case, does anyone would anyone like to plug anything? I will plug October Jones and Fisher Flights. It's a fancy podcast. You know it. Maybe you love it. Maybe you don't. Maybe you'll love it in the future. Who can say? We're right in the middle of season two, writing it, that is, and it's all very exciting. And if you like friendship adventures with fantasy elements and uh, anti-colonial themes, you should try it. I guess I'll go next. That's usually how that goes. Uh, you can, f- it doesn't have to be, but eh, today I'm following the conventions. Uh, if you need any music stuff, uh, I do music, uh, f- I made the intro for this podcast, I do, do music for, uh, October Jones Fisher Legs, you can follow me on my socials, it's at Crustaceous, C-R-U-Z-T-A-C-I-O-U-S, uh, also, uh, things are sort of reopening, uh, even with, you know, COVID still sort of being a thing, but we're opening ca- cautiously, uh, so the band that I play guitar in, Favorite Daughter, is lining up some shows, we already have one booked for May 18th is really really cool so if you're in and around the montreal area around that time uh check us out we're called favorite daughter uh we do indie pop rock it's pretty cool um uh, that's about it uh i'm also going to plug what's my plug what's my my alt plug for this week um i'm gonna plug uh boulangerie le marquis they have a couple of locations uh in montreal they're a gluten-free bakery uh, my girlfriend has celiac disease, uh, if, which is, if you don't re- if you don't know, it's a thing that you know, it's an autoimmune disease. Uh, it means you can't eat gluten, uh, and all, you know your your body tries to kill itself. But hey, uh, the big part is that you <laughs> can't eat bread and stuff. Uh, so they have really delicious uh, pastries and like ch- cakes and stuff. We recently got a whole uh, like a lemon tart cake uh, for my nonna's birthday, and it was divine. It was to die for. Uh, so if you ever if you ever want some gluten free stuff, Le Marquis M A R Q U I S is where to go. Um, I'm gonna quickly plug the Matrix Hotel in downtown Edmonton. They were very nice to me, and I fly standby, and so I wasn't able to arrive for my first night. And I thought I was gonna drop like a hundred and twenty five dollars on a hotel not staying there. And um, I'm not gonna say their name because they'd get in trouble. Not that anybody's going to hear this, but they didn't make me pay that night. It was full on like somebody at the night shift as I stressfully called from the Toronto airport and said, Hi, I'm going to be tonight. I'm so sorry. How much do I owe you? And they were like, honestly, it's just me on shift. You don't have to. So Matrix Hotel, beautiful, beautiful uh, food, lovely time staying in uh, downtown Edmonton if you're ever there. Why not? All right. Let me let me plug. Uh, let me plug the Fairly Our Parents Fairly Otter. So essentially, from what I've gathered from this, so it, I, it's on Paramount Plus, I believe. Par- Viacom, yeah, okay, that's Nickelodeon. No, I was wrong. It's on Paramount Plus because Paramount is Nickelodeon. Uh, Peacock has nothing of value, um, <laughs> except uh, Girls Five Eva, which I watched and it's quite lovely. Anyways, uh, so it's on Paramount Plus. Uh, it is a multi-camera sitcom, which, if you're not familiar with the concept, is any sitcom you can picture with a laugh track in your mind so everything from friends to big bang theory to drake and josh uh is considered a multi-camera sitcom or um but anyways from what i can gather of this show it's a sitcom and timmy turner's old and he still has his fairies but he didn't seem to have gone through that weird arrested development thing that drake bell had to go through uh the character not the actor and um yeah and then he gives his fairies somehow to these two children and then they have wacky adventures but the anime as i showed to my colleagues here uh, on the posters, the animation style is just straight up the same animation from the cartoon, and it's just a 2D character in the 3D space, and it's not like Roger Rabbit style where it kind of blends. It just looks like like they're shouting at tennis balls on the studio space basically, and then somebody's drawing in some fairies later, and I feel really bad for them. I don't envy any actor that has to deal with anything CGI that seems to be in a low budget environment. Uh, if you ever seen those photos of Ian McKellen crying on the set of The Hobbit, because instead of having him talk to they're so depressing where they're just like talk to this tennis ball with martin freeman's face on it and he's like i do a stranger shakespeare i don't understand this 
So, yeah, get yourself a Paramount Plus subscription. They have 95 Star Trek shows and nothing else. And Timmy Turner. And iCarly, I think. So do that. That's my plug. All right. Well, if you enjoyed this podcast, make sure to check out our previous series, Montreal by Night. Make sure to check us out uh, on Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts. You can also check us out on YouTube at Three Kings Loot. Uh, make sure to check out the bag of loot for all of your board game news and get all your board game needs from three Kings loot. Uh, and that is all for us here. Thank you so much for listening. We'll catch you next time.